Welcome everyone to my video on integrating pathos into your writing. So this is an expansion on our understanding of the rhetorical triangle. We have already covered logos or the logical progression of our argument and now we're going to be focusing on pathos. And so um, to understand pathos um, or why this is important, I want to talk about you attitude. And so this is a term from our wiki, and the way I like to think of this is you t writing with you attitude versus me attitude. So basically the concept of you attitude tells us that when I am trying to convince my reader uh, of something, whether it is to believe what I believe or do what I want them to do, I need to write with you attitude. And what that basically means is I should choose, if, if I'm writing to you and I'm trying to convince you to do something that you may or may not want to do, I need to choose my arguments, my style, my tone, based off of what would appeal to you, my reader, not what would appeal to me, the writer. Uh, because I'm not trying to convince myself. Um, if I were, I wouldn't need to write anything. And so the idea is if um, a communication to someone else is necessary to get what you want, then you have to write with you attitude in order to convince your reader. So um, this is really important. So for example, if you're trying to convince your instructor to change your grade, you wouldn't just lay into why you think it's important or, or why I, the, the writer, would think it's important. I would want to choose my arguments, my style, my tone, my evidence based off of what I know my um, my audience would want um, or what they would value or what they would see as um, a relevant or effective reason. Um, and so that's, um, so that's really important. It basically dictates everything that we, we write or how we write. Um, our document. And so to, to better uh, utilize you attitude, we need to understand pathos. Um, so real quick, um, a lot of people get pathos and ethos mixed up because they think that um, ethos is about emotions. But to help you remember that pathos is about affecting emotions, um, I'd like to draw us back to kind of the literal translation of what pathos um, derived from. So in a Latin, pathos originally meant both experience and suffering at the same time. <laughs> um, it, it could be, um, it could mean either. And so from this meaning, we've derived words such as both pathetic and empathy. So in a, in a way, you can think of um, using pathos in your writing as appealing to your reader's pathetic emotions. Um, and so that use of P helps me remember that pathos refers to affecting my reader's empathy or emotions or pathetic emotional um, state. <laughs> um, okay, so how I'd like to break down pathos, lots of classes teach like practical skills on pathos uh, differently. And so I'm going to be uh, using it in these three ways that I think is most effective for business writing. Um, the first way that we affect the our emotions of our readers, um, especially in business, is to identify what they value. So for example, as I was talking about you attitude, you know, what arguments they value, um, what evidence they value. That's all about audience values. And so what an audience value is, is something that someone cares about so much, an ideal or belief, that it would cause them to act. Because you don't want to pick something that people only say they value. Because oftentimes in business writing, we want people to do something. That performing an action is really only what we care about. And so we wouldn't want to choose a value that somebody only cares about enough to talk about. We want to pick the value we have evidence that says that they will act upon this value. Um, and so um, to create you attitude, we want to first find out what our audience values. So for example, if you are trying to convince your reader, your instructor to change your final grade, you would want to see, okay, well, what does this instructor value when assigning a grade? And then you would base your arguments or your premises off of that value. Right? So you attitude would tell us that whatever our audience values, 
we would then base our arguments on that. And then the kind of evidence that our audience would value, that is the kind of evidence that we would use to support our premise. So the idea of the rhetorical triangle is to be truly persuasive. You need all three. Um, and so they really work together. And so that's what we're starting to see now. Okay, so that's the first part of pathos is basing your writer on what your audience values. The second part is emotional examples. And so in creative writing, um, you know, this is an emotional scene where, uh, or it might be those TV ads about making you feel bad about, you know, puppies and, and dogs at the pound that, you know, need our support. Um, but in business writing, you don't really have a lot of that. <laughs> So instead, you can think of emotional examples as qualitative evidence versus logos-based evidence, which would be more quantitative. So these two are kind of opposites. Um, they're both styles of evidence, but pathos-based evidence is more qualitative. So you kind of describe the quality of the experience as opposed to just sticking to facts and figures, which is more logos-based. Okay. Um, the third part of pathos is using unique tone. Um, and that is the personality that you can hear when you read something. Um, and so a different kind of tone can affect people differently. So for example, when I um, am negotiating, having um, a sympathetic or conciliatory tone can sometimes have a better effect than being aggressive. Um, so for example, in this uh, pretend example where you're asking an instructor for a change in a, in a grade, um, having an aggressive tone or a defensive tone probably isn't going to appeal to you attitude, isn't going to appeal to what your reader would value in that tone. So basically audience values kind of um, is the center of you attitude. So you wanna identify what your reader values in arguments, in evidence, in style and tone, um, and then use those. Um, okay, so that, that's basically the basis of, of pathos that we'll be using. And so this video is going to take us a little bit further into each one of these. Okay, um, so the first thing I want to talk about a little bit more uh, is uh, the emotional examples. So, um, if you check out Moodle, there this uh, activity sheet is up there for you. So this is under week three, um, and it's an activity sheet. So if you scroll down, click on week three, um, there is a Word document called Worksheet Qualitative versus Quantitative Evidence. Um, and so this will take us through a couple of ways to tell the difference. All right. So the first way is talking about show, don't tell. So show, don't tell is a style of, of qualitative evidence. And then the second page in our worksheet um, just does a direct comparison of qualitative versus quantitative evidence. Okay. Um, so show, don't tell is a term from our wiki that basically um, is a style of writing. And so um, this is something I will want to see you using in your job application letter. Um, so a lot of times our premises, our claims, our tells, it's something that I, the writer, might believe, but my reader may or may not. <clears throat> so everybody claims or tells me that they have great leadership experience um, or that they can use Excel spreadsheet to identify the most draining expenses. Um, they, lots of people might be claiming these things. So every think of uh, the job that you're applying to in... Um, Assignment 7043, hundreds of people may be claiming or telling the potential employer that they have leadership experience. Um, so how do you differentiate your experience as a leader against everybody else's? And the way that we do that is by showing how you lead, okay? So showing is how, and telling is just a claim of what you did, okay? Um, so showing is a style of evidence. So for example, um, if I wanted to talk about, I used uh, Excel to identify the most draining expenses and found ways to cut costs. That is a tell. Even if I was specific and said something like, 
first I uh, identified um, which expenses were draining um, and then I uh, made decisions about where to cut costs and proposed this to my superiors. Even that example, even though it has three specific steps, is still telling. It's more telling because I don't know how this person did this. So showing is like an instruction manual. Um, someone else should be able to read your paragraph and be able to follow the same steps that you did. And so showing, you really can't do that in one sentence, okay? Usually showing is multiple sentences and makes up the bulk of your evidence in a paragraph, okay? Um, however, tells are great premises. And so if you have a step-by-step -step premise like that, first I identified draining expenses, then I um, came up with solutions to cut costs, and finally I presented my ideas to my superiors. That's a great first sentence, a premise, to introduce your show, don't tell style evidence. And it tells you what to describe in order. So to show that, I would first want to describe, again, how I identified those draining expenses. How did I choose areas to cut costs? How did I present this to my superior? Okay, and so you would, would want to describe the step by step, each step basically having one or two sentences showing, describing in detail, like you're um, reading a scene or watching a scene in a movie. Um, so this is qualitative style evidence, right? It doesn't necessarily tell you facts and figures, um, like how much, like what percentage you cut costs but it describes the experience and that kind of evidence affects how our reader feels about the quality of your experience. Um, so lots of people may be making this claim or saying this, but if you write it this way, your reader's going to feel as though you are more um, experienced than the person who just tells. And so you might think of this less like show don't tell and more like tell than show. Your premise tells first, so this might be our, our premise, and then your evidence should show how you went about that to uh, demonstrate to your reader the depth and quality of your qualifications. Okay, so that's the idea of show, don't tell. And so there's a bunch of examples down here of uh, where you can test this out and see if is this showing or telling, but I want to skip to our next page. Um, which is qualitative versus quantitative evidence. So for example, um, your resume should have quite a bit of quantitative evidence, so that an example of that would be decreased waste by 10%. Okay, um, You either did or you didn't. It, it, uh, you can't really tell how one person did this versus another. Um, and so your resume should ha be packed full of a lot of these facts and figures. But in your job application letter, you want to gear more towards going in-depth on how you did that um, for a couple of reasons. Um, many people are going to claim similar things, and so you have to show the quality of your work. Um, and also, if you're able to describe how you did something, I'm going to believe you more than someone who just claims they can. Um, I, it's going to be more convincing, um, and I can trust that experience better, that you really understand that experience better if you can describe how you go about it. So an example of turning this quantitative style evidence into qualitative would be something like this. I'm going to paste this into your example so that you have it on Moodle. Um, so notice how much more text there is. So to to decrease wasted funds, I input all expenditures in, uh, into an Excel spreadsheet. Then I performed a cost comparison to the most cost-effective vendors available. And even this is a little bit telling. And if you wanted, you could expand on how you did this cost comparison. Um, it might be as simple as comparing, um, uh, inputting into column B, um, potential range, cost ranges, and then just comparing columns A and B. That would be a little bit more showing than this sentence. 
Uh, so moving on, once I identified areas where we were spending more than necessary, I interviewed coworkers involved with those tasks to identify why they had chosen the more expensive vendor. During this phase, and this is a moment where I'm integrating um, transferable skill of interpersonal communication, uh, but it's still a little bit telling. So it's, it's not bad, but it's, it's still a little bit more on the telling side than the showing side. During this phase, it was important to approach each conversation without judgment so as to avoid negative reactions to my investigation. Well, how did I do that? Um, and so this sentence probably could use another one following it, describing how I approached each conversation that carefully. Um, and so that would improve the quality of the showing here. As a result, I was able to identify steps in our project process that resulted in increased costs. So again, this is a little bit telling. Um, and so instead, I, I might add here by listing, again, in the Excel spreadsheet in column C, um, details that I learned from the interview. Um, I reduced these to their most important parts things that I judged as affecting the decision for why they went with the more expensive item. And so what I just said there is a little bit more showing than this sentence. And create easy to use solutions that would both reduce costs without ex extending time the timeline. So again, this is good, but it's not, it could be better in terms of showing. And so what did, what kind of solutions did I create? So you might add an example here to show a little bit more um, how the solution would reduce time without extending the time, or reduce costs without extending the timeline. So to sum up, this example right here is pretty good at showing this. Um, but even within this, there could be a little bit more showing. It's just a matter of, and here's a return to one of our terms, brevity. So brevity tells us that whatever you think is most important, you should spend more time on, and whatever you think is less important, you spend less time on. So in here, if it's really important to show interpersonal skills, I might expand on my showing of this interviewing part. Um, and if it's less important to show the Excel spreadsheet work, then I would spend less time on that. If it's more important to show my Excel spreadsheet skills, then I would spend more time describing those steps. Um, and less time on the interpersonal stuff, okay? So within show, don't tell, if you take it too far, it can just be way too much detail. Um, but overall, within this example, I would probably pick at least one of these steps and expand with it, at probably one more sentence so that it shows a little better. Based on what I have judged as what my target audience values most. So whatever they value most in experience, that's what I would want to spend more sentences on. Whatever my audience valued least, I would want to be more brief on, okay? So this is qualitative evidence. Um, and so this is the emotional examples from our rhetorical triangle. Okay, so we're talking, we've already been talking about audience values. We just finished talking about emotional examples. Now it's time to talk about tone. And tone is not so much content, but how you express content. And so um, for that, I've got an example up on Moodle. So it's also in here. So that's this activity on tone so that you can always look at it on your own. And it basically has um, two examples from someone who um, texted a girl asking them out. <laughs> so if you read each of these examples out loud, they are written in a way where the attitude or personality is completely different. Um, so the first example, I saw you looking at me. I know you think I'm hot. Are you shy or something? So you can hear the difference. Um, and then example two, okay, so I don't have the guts to do this in person. The thing is, would you like to go out? So on and so forth. So if you read both of these examples, you can hear the personality difference. The first one may sound more cocky, more self-assured, um, more um, confident. You know, there's a range of positive and negative descriptors for this personality in example one. And example two, same thing. There's a range of positive and negative descriptors for this personality or attitude. 
it might be shy or um, lacks confidence. Um, it might be humorous. There, there could be several interpretations. Uh, but this is basically what tone is. Both of them are expressing the same thing, asking a girl out, uh, but they are phrasing it in a different way that we get two completely different ideas of who they are, what their personality is. Now, when we do this for business writing, it's probably not going to be as obvious. Everyone says, I'm going to write professionally, but there are subtones beneath professional. And so you want to pick the one that will work best for the kind of personality you want to put out there because your tone tells a person what you're going to be like in, in real life. Um, and so you want to create the tone that will send the message out there that you want to. So for example, um, let's look at this last example. I know that my experience, my, I know that my excellent experience in blank would make me the best possible candidate. Now, first of all, you probably should not be using exclamation marks in a job application letter. Um, it's just not as professional of a punctuation mark. But even if we didn't have the exclamation mark, the use of excellent as an adjective, um, best possible, this kind of sets up a tone of kind of cheerful, exuberant, overconfident. Now, if a place, if a company is really friendly and they're looking for really friendly, upbeat people, that's what they value, then yeah, you might want to go with this tone. Um, however, you may not know if they like that. Um, some companies may see this as unprofessional. Um, and so you might want to go with one of the first two. So let's look at this middle example. I think I should get this position because I have blank experience um, versus... I would be an excellent fit for this position because of my extensive experience in blank. Um, so both sound like in terms of content is very similar, but the second one sounds a little bit more cocky to me. Um, it sounds a little bit uh, more abrasive. I think I should get this position. That's spoken with me attitude, um, a me attitude feeling. I think I should get this position as opposed to I would be an excellent fit for the position that you want, right? Um, I might even remove extensive. Um, I don't like throwing in a bunch of excess adjectives because it it detracts from the actual content. Um, if it is excellent or if it is um, extensive, that will come out. The reader will, will see that. So don't use words like extensive to try to make your reader think what you want them to think. You should just convince them with better evidence. <laughs> um, and so this one, this first one, um, it's okay, I think, to have maybe one of these adjectives in here. I'm an excellent fit. or uh, But I probably wouldn't do more than that because you want to keep your idea kind of clean. This is probably more neutral toned than the rest. Um, this one is just a little bit too abrasive. This one is just a little bit too upbeat and perky um, for me, my style. Um, and so if you want to be state safe, you probably want to try to go with more of a neutral, somewhat confident, but not overly confident like this one example or tone. Um, if you want them want to show that you're friendly and you know that's something they value, go for it. Okay, so that's tone. All right, so just quick review. Um, this uh, video is about integrating pathos into our writing, and so that means writing with you attitude, identifying what our audience values, selecting our arguments, our style of evidence, whether it is qualitative or quantitative, and then selecting our tone or personality based off of what our audience values. Okay, I hope this video was useful. You should definitely start incorporating um, pathos into your job application letter and um, when appropriate in future assignments. Okay, um, I hope you'll bring any questions you have to our virtual classroom or email me. I hope this was helpful. Thank you and good luck.